if we have two squared times two to the fifth, what that really means is two squared means that there are two factors of two being multiplied. Two to the fifth means that there are five factors of two being multiplied. So if we have two factors of two and five factors of two, how many factors of two are we multiplying together total? Seven. Seven of them. Is there a shortcut we could do using the numbers two and five to get seven? Two plus five is seven. So the next one, two to the first times two to the sixth would be two to the seventh. How about a to the third times a to the sixth? A to the ninth. So you already figured out. If you are multiplying with the same base, the property is that you add the exponents. Now, what if we had a to the third times b to the fourth? Could we add those exponents? No. Why not? A and b are not the same. This is a to the third, b to the fourth. You can't combine those. Okay, parentheses. Two squared means two times two. That set of parentheses raised to the third means that there's going to be three of those sets of parentheses. What's happening between the parentheses? Multiplication. Multiplication. So how many twos are we multiplying together? Six of them. Can you think of a shortcut using two and three to get six? Two times three. So two squared raised to the second would be two to the fourth because two times two is four. A to the third raised to the fourth would be A to the twelfth because three times four is twelve. So the <clears throat> power of a power property, which again, you don't have to memorize the names, you multiply the exponents together. The next one is kind of similar. Just think of it as anything that doesn't have an exponent has an exponent of one. <clears throat> but let's look at what this really means. And this isn't going to look like this precisely. It'll look like this on your assignment. 2b squared. 2b squared means that we've got 2 times b times 2 times b. How many 2s are we multiplying together? How many b's are we multiplying together? So it's 2 squared b squared. Do you see how you apply the exponent to all of the things being multiplied together inside the parentheses? So a b to the third is a to the third b to the third and this is a to the m b to the m. <clears throat> 9 through 11 I really feel like we should do this as the second property not the fourth property. Is this the fourth property? Yeah. When we multiply, we add the exponents. When we divide, what do you think we're going to do with the exponents? Subtract. Subtract. And here's why. 2 to the third means we've got 2 times 2 times 2 on the top. 2 to the first means we've got one of them on the bottom. 1 on the top cancels 1 on the bottom, leaving us with 2 squared. The shortcut is we take 2 we subtract the exponents, 3 minus 1, and that gives us 2 squared. So what would number 10 be? 2 to the 3rd. <clears throat> and a to the 6th divided by a squared? Oh, a to the 4th. <clears throat> now, this gets a little bit confusing when the bigger number isn't on top. Say we had a squared over a to the 7th. It would be a to the negative fifth or 1 over a to the fifth. And we'll talk about that in a minute when we get to negative exponents. <clears throat> um, this is a to the m minus n. Okay. Next page. <clears throat> This property is very, very similar to the other property involving parentheses. 3 fourths squared means that we've got 3 fourths multiplied twice. 
When we multiply fractions, you multiply straight across the top, so that'd be three times three, which is three squared, straight across the bottom, four times four is four squared. So do you see how, just like that previous property, you're applying that exponent to everything that's being divided inside the parentheses? So number 13, who wants to take a guess? Uh, a squared, A cubed over B cubed. A cubed over B cubed. And this would be A to the M over B to the M. <clears throat> okay, the negative exponents. I could ask you to get out your calculator and do all of this yourself, but I'll just help you out with it really quick. 2 to the 4th is 16. 2 to the 3rd is 8. 2 squared is 4. 2 to the 1st is 2. Does anyone know what 2 to the 0 is? Zero. It's not 0. One. It's 1. Crazy. Which, actually, let's just jump down and talk about this. Anything raised to the 0 power is 1. And here's why. If I say 2 to the 3rd, that means there are 3 factors of 2. If I say 2 to the 0, how many factors of 2 do there have to be? There has to be zero factors of two. That means there's no twos there. Well, if you look at two times two times two, you could also say there's a times one in there. There's always a times one in there. There's always the identity. But if there's no factors of two, there's no twos there. There's just the one. So five to the zero is one. Eight to the zero is one. Do you see how the negative is inside the parentheses? Anything raised to the zero power is one because there are zero factors of that thing. Okay, two to the negative one <clears throat> is the decimal 0. 0.5, which is one half. Two to the negative two is 0. 0.25, which is one fourth. This next one is one eighth, and the next one is one sixteenth. Okay. Take a look at 2 to the 4th and 2 to the negative 4th. Do you see anything interesting? <coughs> Take a look at 2 to the 3rd compared to 2 to the negative 3rd. Do you Whoa. see anything interesting? Take a look at 2 squared compared to 2 to the negative 2. Do you see anything interesting? <clears throat> what does this mean? This means that 2 to the negative 4th is really 1 over 2 to the positive 4th. 2 to the negative 2 is really 1 over 2 to the positive 2. Negative exponents move. They take the reciprocal. So a to the negative m is 1 over a to the positive m. This also can work backwards. Say we had something like 2a over b to the negative fifth. Negative exponents move. That b to the negative fifth can't stay in the bottom. It's going to move to the top, and this will become 2a times b to the fifth. You could put that over 1 if you wanted to, because there's nothing left in the denominator except a 1. Okay. The last thing we're going to do today are these six examples. It says evaluate, and your assignment says evaluate. Evaluate means that if you get an answer of 2 to the 4th, I should make you plug it into your calculator and get a number answer. But I don't want you to focus on that aspect of it. I want you to focus on using the properties accurately. So I would like us to simplify the expression. Just use the properties that we learned. It says tell which properties you use. That basically just means show your work. I'm not going to ask you to write the names of each property next to each step. Um, that would be called a proof, by the way. If you want to do proofs in Algebra 2, we can. But I would be OK with maybe skipping that for now, forever, maybe. Okay, the first one's pretty easy. 6 squared times 6 to the 3rd. We're multiplying, so what do we do with the exponents? Add them, so 6 to the 5th. 6 to the 5th. 
I should make you do six raised to the fifth and come up with the number, but I really just want to check that you can do the properties effectively. Okay, this next one, there's a couple steps. Anytime I see parentheses, I'm going to attack the parentheses first. So what do we do with nine squared raised to the negative third? Multiply them. So we've got nine to the sixth from before, and this would be nine to the negative six. Now you're faced with a decision. You could deal with a negative exponent, or you could use the property where you add the exponents. It's up to you which way you take that. I'm going to add these because they're both nines raised to something. Six plus negative six is zero. What's nine to the zero? One. <clears throat> okay, again, anytime I see parentheses with exponents on the outside, I'm going to deal with that first. I've got three over two to the negative one. 1 squared over 2 squared. On the top, we've got 3 times, what, what is 1 squared? 1. Do we really need to write the 1 on the top? Nah. I will let you evaluate. If it's 1 raised to the something, go ahead and evaluate that because you don't really need that extra 1 in there. When you multiply fractions, you multiply straight across the top, straight across the bottom. So this is 2 to the negative 1 times 2 to the negative 2. If we add those exponents, what's negative 1 plus 2? One. 1. So this is 2 to the first, which is just 2. So our answer is 3 halves. Number 21. What's the first step? Um. Three, yep. three to the negative two over five to the negative two. When you're simplifying, you cannot leave negative exponents. You have to deal with your negative exponents. The three to the negative two is going to move to the bottom and become three squared. What's going to happen with the five to the negative two? It will go to the top. Again, you could approach this problem in two different ways. You could do what we just did in number 21 and take those two things and switch them. Or, because it's division, what can we do with the exponents? You can subtract them. What is negative 5 minus a negative 3? Negative 8. Negative 2? Now we still have to deal with the negatives. So 7 to the negative 2 is 1 over 7 squared. If you did this the other way, you'd switch this and make 7 to the third on the top and 7 to the fifth on the bottom. Then you could subtract. 3 minus 5 is negative 2, and then you'd still be at that step and have to deal with the negative. Some people prefer, instead of thinking of this as subtraction, they prefer to think of it as 7 to the 3rd means that there's 3 of them. 7 to the 5th means that there's 5 of them. These 3 are going to cancel out 3 on the bottom, leaving 2 left on the bottom. That's kind of a reason why the negative exponents move, because you're looking at where those factors of 7 end up. So some people like to subtract, some people like to think of it as there's three of them on the top, there's five of them on the bottom, the three on the top cancel three of the five, leaving two left over on the bottom. However you want to think about that is fine. Okay, 23 is the most complex one we've done so far. I want you to try it on your own. I think that you can do it. First, you would apply the exponent of 2 to both of the things in the parentheses, so a squared over b to the sixth, and that 3 and 2 have to be multiplied together. Then multiply straight across the top, so a to the fourth and a squared would combine to give us a to the sixth. On the bottom, b to the first and b to the sixth would combine to give us b to the seventh. Then you can match things up vertically and subtract. 6 minus 2 is 4, so a to the fourth. 3 minus 7 is negative 4 and then deal with your negative exponent, move that to the bottom.